So earlier we saw hikari ga chika chika to tenmetsu shiteru. What did you say? Do you remember what that meant? What the chika chika meant? Chika chika means flashing. Yeah. So what do you think the sentence below means? Mega chika chika suru. The eye flashes. So what do you think eyes flashing would mean? Is it, do you think you have like a flashlight in your eyes? What, what would you be your guess? This is a ga marking the subject. Uh, I mean, the, the eye, eye it's the... Yes, the eye is doing chika chika. But what do you think this chika chika is going to look like in this context? The the eyelid is closing up and yes, opening. Exactly. In, in, you know, rapidly. Yep. So mega chika chika suru means the eye is blinking. They are blinking. It's exact. Perfect. But, Yes. Does it mean that he just blinked or does it actually mean he blinked constantly? He's blinking constantly. So it's not just a one blink, it's a blink, 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 blink. Um, basically, it's like you're trying to clear your eyes. So you can actually oh. add suru to most adverbs, like chika chika to, to mean to do the verb. So mega chika chika suru would be the eyes is doing flashing. In other words, the eyes are blinking. Hi. Hi. Our next <laughs> word is mabataki mabataki is like i think it's eyelid but now i'm like is it not eyelid mabataki. Mabata. so mabataki is the noun for blink uh mabataku is to blink so mabataki is uh -huh. the blink okay mabataki um, so then and then it becomes to blink so rather than saying chika chika suru, over here we're actually uh, having the verb to be blinking. So can you read the sentence for me? Hi. Mabataki o suru dorobo. What does this mean? The thief. Hi. Yes. And it's modified by this clause. So the eye flashing thief. The, the thief that the, that's blinking that blinks so either no, blinks blink. hi, um habitually or blinking i mean or, or will yes. blink will blink so either habitual or future wait, wait. okay what is the must form of sudo she must perfect she must so this word right here is a part of the body. Do you happen to know this kanji? This is the shoulder. Yes. Kata. Is Perfect. Kata. Nice. So now we're looking at passive form, which we've probably seen before, um, specifically with u verbs. So modoru is an u verb. That's r plus u. So you take out that u and you replace it with areru to make modorareru, which is to have returned, like... Some, something else is doing the returning. That's not the subject. How would you make passive form from tsukamu, which is to grasp? So the last reading, I just made a mistake between this passive and causative. Right. They both take rareru as the modifier at the um, end, correct? They can. It It's a little bit different depending if it's a do verb or a u verb. Um. So in that case, it can be context. I see. Yeah, I made that mistake last time. So this uh, sukamu is a u verb. So this u um, sukamu. So the k sound is going to be suk. Mm. Wait a minute. This final thing right here. Areru, so sukareru. So it ends actually with a mu sound, which is m plus u. So what you do is yes. take out that u and you add the a, so it becomes sukamareru. Yeah, sukamareru. So do verbs, which are verbs that end with do that are not like modoru, um, their passive and causative form are identical, but um, this is a u verb, so they look different. Um, Causative form for u verb would be um, raseru, I think. I think that's what it was. I think that's what it is. Ra, huh? It has the it has the ra sound in it. Uh, 
but most things have like a da sound. But yeah, it's um the the causative is da seru versus da reru. So da seru. Okay. Right. So that'd be a se do for um causative versus a de do. Um, but it is true that if you were looking at a do verb that is do, not r plus u, then it they do look the same in that context. So miru, for example, to see, um, would both be mirareru for both versions. Um, which is definitely confusing. Um, can you read this for me? Tisan ni kata o tsukamareru. Kata o sukamareru. Sukamar is to grab something, right? It's yes. To ho hold on to. In passive form. Uh, in passive form. So, what are they grabbing onto? Onto the shoulder, but. Yes. If this is a passive verb, then does that mean that that is a got and not an all? I'm confused here. Okay, so that confusion comes from how I was describing that. The difference between all and ga is actually intent. It is not the passiveness. I just didn't know what was the right word. If there's intent, like someone had a brain and was like, I will do this, you will use all. If there's no intent, you will use ga. So no intent is ga. Tsukamaru is to grab something, and tsukamareru is a passive grabbing. In both sentences, somebody had in their brain, I will grab something. The difference is that tsukama, tsukamu would mean the subject of the sentence does the grabbing. Subject grabs. Tsukamareru means subject is grabbed. So over here, the person getting their bags grab, their shoulder grab, is not the subject of the sentence. It is somebody else. So the one doing the grabbing will not be marked by wa. So if I said, um, dorobo wa kata o, no, I do a different kata, kata o tsukamu. This would mean, the thief grabs the shoulders. If I said, um, uh, dorobo ni kata o tsu, um, tsukamareru, this would mean that the thief grabs the shoulders. So these two sentences are the same. But if I said, um, Wait, this wait, one, wait, wait, wait. it would be different. The first two sentences is the same in meaning? Yes, these are the same. These are both describing the same incident. Um okay, let's I'm and this one is can, a different can, incident. Can we spend some time on this point? Because yes. I'm really weak at this point. So the very first sentence on the top, Dorobo wa kata o Su tsukamu. Right. The the subject is the dorobo. He is right. the one that initiate the action, which is the sukamu. Yes. So the thief performed the act of grabbing on the shoulder. Yes. Kata o, the direct object. Yes. The second sentence, it say dorobo dorobo ni. Kata o sukamareru. The sukamareru is a verb that is performed on the subject itself. Yes. So the subject right. in this sentence right here is not defined for the second sentence. But in both sentences, the thief is doing the grabbing of somebody's shoulder. So what do you think the one down here is saying? Dorobo wa kata o tsukamareru. Dorobo wa. Uh, there it is. Okay. Dorobo wa kata o tsukamareru. Okay. 
Okay, so the this third sentence here say has the subject is yes. dorobo. So we know it's not doing tsukamu, but tsukamu is being done to the dorobo. So we can assume these are the dorobo's kata. Most likely somebody is... grab the dorobo on yes. the shoulder. Exactly. So you will not see this specific sentence very often. Um, instead, you would say dorobo no kata, for example, those thieves' shoulders, rather than the thief was grabbed by the shoulders is kind of what this is saying. But you wouldn't see that that often in Japanese. It's a little bit a, a lot, I would say. So you'd either just drop this or drop that. Dorobo wa tsukamareru would be the thief was caught, was, was um, captured. Um, but yeah, that that's how what passive means. So passive is a word that refers to the subject does not do the verb. The verb is done to the subject. And O means there was intent in this action occurring. There was some thought. Hi. Some so, thoughts occurred. In this case, this neat particle is marking the subject Ji-san. The subject si -jan, si is it, it's being marking grabbed. the doer, yes, but theoretically it's not called the subject in this context due to um, conjugation. So well, in he, English, he act like a subject, so, right? Yes. He, in English, this would be marked by the word "by." My shoulders were grabbed by Sam. That's that's that, I I think that's what. I kind of mean in my mind when I say subject, yes. I'm I'm thinking subject is the is the the one who performed the verb. Mm -hmm. That's that that is like how you're taught it means in the beginning, but theoretically because of the conjugation going on here, tukamaridu in passive form, it means that it is performing the form in the act of having the ver a verb done to them, is them performing the verb, <laughs> which is kind of like convoluted to um, think about it that way. But that's how you would describe what passive is. My shoulders were grabbed by grandpa. This kind of moving things around the subject is shoulders, um, well, or my perhaps. I am the subject of the sentence, even oh, though I'm not Lord, doing I'm... the verb. It, it's because the I'm verb getting... tsukamaru is not to grab. Okay, it's not to grab anymore. It doesn't it's mean that. to be grabbed. It is to be grabbed. So, so this is the okay, action I'm, they're doing to be grabbed. I am to doing to be grabbed. The person that that being grabbed is not indicated in this sentence. Yes. There is a, there is someone, it could be I, yes. could be some other person that was being grabbed by the grandpa. Yes. Exactly. Okay. It's whoever these kata belong to, which should not be the grandpa, because that would be weird. But yeah, grandpa is the grandpa it. here is not the subject of the sentence. Yes. He is the tool for how to get this done to the subject. He's the oh, yes. thinker. Okay. Um, so yeah, that you'll get used to it as you see more and more sentences. Um, I think like <laughs> passive is easier in Japanese than it is in English because in English you have to throw in like 20 words and like move everything around and I'm always like how do I rearrange the sentence <laughs> um, versus Japanese it's like pretty easy just the verb is changed and then the wa is no longer being done but yeah next is dekai which means huge large hey. dekai. Dekai. Um, so let's go read this sentence Hi. So now we have a different tool marker, which is de. Hi. Whose de te do you think this is? Is it the te of the person whose shoulders are being tsukamaru? Or is it the te belonging to the person doing tsukamu? Is the te belonging to the person doing the tsukamu? Yes. Is it that one, or is it belonging to the person doing tsukamaridu? The tsukumu, the, per, yeah. the hand that touches the subject. Yes, exactly. It's marked by the de. Yep. What do we know about this hand? It's a large hand. 
So, a large okay. hand touches whoever it is. Yes. Grabs the shoulders. Grabs. Hi. Uh, our next word is furikairu. Furikairu means basically a look behind. Furi. Hi. Furu is to shake and kairu is to return. So return shaking is to look behind. So normally this is turning your head to look behind. It's not normally spinning around in 180 degrees and be like, ha, ah, gotcha. It's normally more just the head rotating the 80 de 180 degrees. Really? <laughs> Furi kairu. Furi kairu. Furi. Okay. And then we have ikinari. Which means suddenly or with no warning. Ikinari. So this is different than Toto Zen. Because yeah. Toto Zen is just like suddenly this action occurs. Ikinari more insinuates there was no build up for this occurring. It's kind of the idea of ikinari. Um, so you're not really going to normally start a sentence with ikinari, but you always, but Toto Zen almost always shows up at the beginning of the sentence. It's like the, and then this happened kind of word. Versus ikinari is more like, it, this is an adverb that is special. It doesn't have to, ku, or ni. It's just ikinari on its own. So it's a special little adverb. Um, ikinari. Do you have any idea how this would be pronounced? It's with edu, but it also would be pronounced the same if it ended with su. Kaeru. Yep. Kaeru. Okay, so now we're learning a new if when statement, which is tada. Tada is basically if and when when you're talking about one specific occasion that either will happen or did happen. So you're not really talking about all laws in the universe of something occurring. For example, in future tense, you can say natsu ga kittara nihon ni iku would mean when summer comes, I will go to Japan. This doesn't mean I go to Japan every year in the summer, but it means this coming summer, when it arrives, I'll be going to Japan. So this would be an example of the when, I'm referring to one event. There's also, for example, sore wo nusundara shinuzo. This right here means, if you steal that, you will die. That's basically what it's saying. But it makes it, if you said to, that'd be really aggressive. It says, when you steal it, you die, like as a fact. Versus Tara is more like, well, if you happen to decide to steal this, you're just you're just gonna die. So this acts more like a warning in that case. So <laughs> yeah. So this is talking about basically one specific event normally with Tara, though it could be a just you don't have to get the event done. So this is also used for like I would say 80 to 70 percent this should occur. So it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but you could be fairly certain that there should be a cause and effect relationship between the two items. Either when summer comes, you go to Japan, or you touch this and you'll die. So this could be someone kills you because you touch it versus just an automatic death spell. It should be more like to. <laughs> okay. Hey. So now I want you to say, when I look back, so this is what's going to be attached with the tada. Gramps grabs my shoulder. Uh, tada gets ta form, which is the past tense. So basically, when this is done, this occurs. So anyway, when I look back, Gramps grabs my shoulders. So we got tsukamareru, to be grabbed by, kata, and furikairu. Furikairu, when I look back. Mm, it needs to be in the uh, te form. Hi. So fu furikaete. Okay, so I need to change to tara. So, furikae tara. Chisan ni. Kata o tsumareru. tsumareru. Perfect. Tsukamareru. Oh, I didn't read. Right, right. Tsukamareru. Tsukamareru. Perfect. Okay, so this is a. Uh, do you remember what Nagara meant? I remember last time it took you like a little bit to do a little pressure. Hey, Nagara is while while yes. the act while the while doing A also doing B. Yes, exactly. Okay, now we have the next sentence to read. Mega chiki chiki suru. Chika chika. Ah, chika chika tsuru. 
Mabatakio Shinagara Furikatara. Furikaitara. I was I I had it um written badly. It's kai. Uh, the e is not outside of it. Furikaitara. Waki michi ni haite kite ita. Chisa ni ikinari de. I'm sorry. Ikinari de kai de. De Katao Tsukamareta. Hi. So first Mega Chika Chika Suru. What happened? I flashing. I flashing and uh blinking and mapat mabat haki. So this is the actual word for blinking. So he says my I blink my eyes and then he says and then he continues to say, while blinking. Shinakara, ah, you see. Uh, mabataki o shibanara, furi kaetatara. I turned while I was blinking. Hi. And then, uh, hmm, I'll, I'll go back to this point. Um, wak, wakimichi ni haite kite ita, meaning I. Um, I I go into the the side street. What is this being attached to right here? It's not a period here. This is a relative clause. I see here. So is the jisan ni, um, the old man, the old man, um, ter, uh, enter into, uh, and this kita is referring to. Khan, he's he's, yes. he's enter the street and move towards Khan, towards Khan, and it's ikanari, ikanari. So he suddenly tukamarus. Ah, uh, yes, ikanari. Uh, he suddenly um grabs my shoulder with his large hand. Perfect. Yep. So when I turn around. My shoulders were suddenly grabbed by his big hands, which were from the grandpa that had already returned entering into the street. But yeah, you don't really say see kiteita that often, so it's kind of funny. Okay, perfect. And now we're just going to do a little kanji check before our lesson ends. Do you remember how this guy's pronounced? Ashioto. Perfect. And next one's over here. Oku. Perfect. And this guy? Kieru. Nice. And this guy will be our last one. Furikaisu. Yep. Furi furikaisu. This is actually furikairu. Um, furikaisu would be to return something. <laughs> Like, one of them is I return, and the other one is I return something. They're basically the same verb. It's like deru and dasu, but in this case, it's ending with su versus du. Furikairu, furikaisu. Um, but yeah, this compound word is furikairu. But yep, that's it for today.